Hey, this is Dr. Susan Wilder with an end of July update. Um, we are exactly six months into our COVID-19 pandemic in the United States, first case having been in Tempe, Arizona at the end of January. Um, and frankly, I was not sure I was gonna do an update this week because I have been a bit burnt out and pretty disheartened. Um, We've topped over 4.5 million cases in the United States and 155,000 deaths. These are mind numbing numbers that we did not anticipate at the beginning of this year that we could see as many as a quarter of a million dead within a year. Um, we rank among the top 10 countries in the nation in COVID deaths per capita. Um, and that's over a hundred fold that of New, New Zealand, 93 fold that of South Korea, 58 fold that of Japan. And that's just unacceptable. I'm disheartened that deaths are being underreported. Um, patients are not necessarily being tested for COVID when they present with heart attacks, strokes, vascular complications, um, and we know COVID is just as much a vascular disease as it is a respiratory disease. Um, and some US towns, including some right here in our area, uh, per one coroner, don't believe in testing because increasing case counts could hurt the economy. So let's just be clear, denial is a defense mechanism for insecurity. It is not a tactical strategy for beating out a pandemic. Um, I'm disheartened to hear that a hospice physician in our local community has been harassed and threatened by a family member of a patient demanding that she remove COVID-19 as a contributing cause of death on her death certificate. I'm disheartened that uh, patients are more concerned about their blood type, which is not actionable, and not concerned enough about things linked to their blood type, like blood sugar, their blood pressure, uh, C-reactive protein inflammatory markers, body mass index. These risk factors genetically linked to blood type are completely within your power to change. I'm disheartened that professional athletes and politicians, even those who believe COVID is an overblown hoax and decry protective measures, can de get tested daily or at will while teachers, students, grocery store clerks, normal Americans have to scramble to find testing and wait days for results that are effectively useless by the time they're reported. We are at war with an invisible enemy. And as my husband put it, a, a molecular zombie. And maybe, you know, it would be easier to get our head around if virus particles lit up or glowed in the dark as they, as someone spoke, or we could see victims gasping for air and dying in front of our eyes. You know, maybe, maybe we'd better comprehend it. Unfortunately, most of you haven't witnessed um, the personal casualties, uh, the people saying, I had no idea it was, the, the, it could be this terrifying I wish I had worn a mask. Um, now we're all experiencing the economic devastation, the emotional turmoil, um, and so many problems seem overwhelming. I mean, I heard last week 30 million Americans did not have enough to eat. That's one tenth of the population on a given day. Um, the problem of how to open schools safely um, seems very hard and I, I give tremendous kudos to all those incredible people who are working hard on these solving these problems. And also the problem of how to protect those at extreme risk without relegating them to uh, perpetual solitary confinement. Now we have always rebounded from economic depths, but we cannot resurrect the lives lost. So um, I'm also, I've also been devastated just having to constantly, tire, tirelessly battle 
manipulated campaigns of disinformation designed to sow confusion, distrust, divisiveness, blame, hate, and threaten the very fabric of our democracy. We, the people, cannot afford to be at war with each other. Um, so let me ask you this, who deserves your attention? Um, maybe is it the world's leading infectious disease expert with a half century career devoted to public health or a ramshackle group of unknowns in white coats with questionable, if any, frontline ex clinical experience promoting unsubstantiated claims. As I always taught physicians, I trained uh, in, in the Air Force and at Mayo, respect must be earned. Your respect is value, is incredibly valuable. Deploy it judiciously. As Mark Twain so aptly stated, ain't what you think, it's what you know that's dead wrong. So question everything, please. But listen, listen to people who should have earned your respect. However, I'm going to take a dose of my own medicine. I've had my five minutes of pity party and, uh, and uh, focus on resilience and hang on to hope because there are a lot of good things happening in the world. And, and that's where I think we want to shift our attention is how to move forward. I am super grateful that we've had, we have three US funded vaccines and a couple in China moving on, on to phase three clinical trials within the next month or two. That means they're at the point where they're going into human studies of determining safety and effectiveness. Um, they have to achieve at least 50% effectiveness to probably qualify for approval. Now, usually phase three trials take one to three years but of course, everything's being fast-tracked and hopefully no dangerous shortcuts uh, being taken. Um, I am inspired by the support, um, sense of humor, positive attitudes, and can-do spirits of my relatives and our, our patients of all ages. You guys just blow me away. Um, I'm super proud of my kids who've been incredibly resilient through this, two of them in college. Um, one just organized a group of fellow students at WashU to tutor um, needy kids and within a couple days amassed over 130 student volunteer tutors and over 500 requests for tutoring. So blessed are the problem solvers. They remind us that we can each do our part to heal the world. This brings to mind one of my favorite, favorite quotes in my, my family and my work family at Lifescape. Now I am absolutely a quotaholic. Um, this one's attributed to Ralph Waldo Emerson, but I think the original essay was from um, Betty Stanley. It's called Success. Success, to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find beauty and the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition, to know that one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. So go forth and succeed. Thanks again for your support. Thanks for wearing a mask, staying distant, taking care of yourself, treasuring your health. We appreciate you. Have a great week.